Great to have you both. Uh, Moselle, let me turn to you first. We're going to talk a lot about, if this happens, right. how he restructures it uh, as a private entity. But your point is that regulation is going to continue. Absolutely. You know, there's, the genie's already out of the bottle. And the FTC is still going to continue to look at whether Twitter has complied with its con prior consent orders and the whistleblower's complaints still out there. And so that's one. And Musk has already talked about that, too. In addition, you know, the uh, FTC may be asked to look at uh, the national security issues that the Congress had a hearing about just a couple of weeks ago, because already Meta has said it's taken off Chinese and Russian sites for, um, for essentially election interference. So what is Twitter doing? They're going to be asked about that. Roger, what's your take on uh, assuming this happens, on how he... Uh, changes the the content structure of, of the platform and how that's going to collide with what Moselle's talking about. Yeah. Carl, I think history shows that Musk doesn't have a plan for making Twitter a better platform. You know, he's been all over the place. This has been largely, you know, about emotions. And my sense is that he really believes that more extreme content on Twitter is completely reasonable. And so as a consequence, I would expect moderation efforts to be reduced, possibly in the name of cost cutting, and that, you know, we're going to lose all visibility on what's going on inside the company because it'll be private. You know, I think regulators, uh, with all due respect to Moselle on this issue, I think the regulators are moving way, way, way too slowly. And I think as a private company, the amount of damage that could be done in a very short period of time by Twitter uh, would be something that would take years to recover from. And we need the national security infrastructure. We need the SEC, the Federal Trade Commission, the Department of Justice, all be putting their best people on investigating Internet platforms because the damage that they're doing to democracy, to public health, and to public safety, is it's extreme and it's getting worse every month. Yeah, there's lots to unpack there, Roger. But I, I just, it is a $44 billion deal. You've got a lot of investors coming in in some form or fashion uh, alongside Musk. You, you really don't think he has a specific plan that he's going to enact and, and, and roll out here? And along those lines, I mean, part of the reason he got into this legal drama in the first place was because of the bots. It sounds like he is looking at the platform pretty critically. I don't know. I mean, we saw that huge cache of tweets from the people from whom he's raising money. And that did not give me any confidence that there's a plan here. It really looked like a lot of fanboys in Silicon Valley basically just, you know, it was a bro culture thing. It's like, hey, man, you're going to buy Twitter. Cool, I'm in. You know, there wasn't any due diligence, as far as I can tell, by Musk. And the others were just sort of piling in because it seemed like the cool thing to do. And that... To me, that's how most of Silicon Valley operates these days. And given how much power they have over our culture, how much power they have over our national security, over public health and democracy, uh, that's just a bad culture to be putting in charge of the most valuable things in our society.